Can you feel the energy? Can you feel the vibration? Especially if I come near to you, you might feel even more so the energy of a vibration <laughs> resonating throughout the room. How true it is as we hear vibrations are filled of energy. Energy being that vibrational power and presence. There's a lot of people who say, hey, I want to raise my vibration. Do we know what that means? What does it mean to raise that vibration? It means to raise that wonderful energy of the divine within you, to raise this wonderful power and presence that is an acknowledgement of God within us, flowing in, through, around, and always for us. How important it is we embrace this understanding as we raise energy, we raise vibration. We do this in a wonderful way called love. For love is that power that is so beautifully expressed that resonates and radiates and moves and vibrates around into the world around us, touching one another. We can experience those vibrations of love. Just as the tuning forks touch one another and there's an energy flow, there's a ripple out, there's a vibrational energy flowing, so it is found within the power of love. The very secret for raising our vibrational experiences found within today's scripture text you read so beautifully. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And when we embrace this wonderful power and presence within us, this is the vibrational experience that goes higher and higher within our lives. As we awaken this journey of love, loving one another, loving ourselves, loving the world around us, and loving a sense in se that says we know and believe that we are all one and how powerful that is. If you truly want to raise that vibrational energy, then you awaken this spiritual energy within you that is connecting you with God. How many of you are familiar with the Star Wars films? Uh, we have Star Wars fans in here already. Hands are going up all around the room saying yes. Then you may be familiar with that wonderful phrase, may the force be with you. How important it is that we wake into this wonderful understanding for what is that force? Love. Now the ancient Roman Catholic Church in its very beginnings in Latin would speak, may the Lord be with you. And that Lord being the very love that is of God. And that modern day version may be the force is with you. That force all being that Lord, that love, that energy that moves within our hearts and our lives. But the greatest wish we have is that love is with you, around you, for you at all times. This is the highest and best that we wish for each and every one, that love may always be with us. For the truth is that love is always with us. That's true. It never leaves us. It never forsakes us. For the energy and presence of love is always there for us. It's just we have to awaken it. We have to awaken to it. We have to awaken to the understanding that love has been there all around. We sing that song, love is in the air, I can feel it everywhere. Uh-huh, and that's how true it is and how wonderful it is when we awaken to the understanding, I feel love everywhere because this is the power and presence of God at work within us. The feeling that love is all around us and we awaken to it because it has always been there for us. So if you're not feeling very loved today, I want you to awaken to the love that has always been there in your life around you and available to you. It's just that we have to understand it, embrace it, and take it in for ourselves and begin the journey of, number one, loving ourselves and appreciating and valuing who we are as the divine creation. And then taking it further and allowing that love to flow from us to the world around us and so on. So we understand that this love can move mountains. Love can heal bodies. Love can change circumstances. We look at all these thoughts as we understand that the power of love within us can remove those obstacles that seem to be so great. Right now, there are many who looked at the bus event and said, wow, how are we going to move this mountain? How are we going to move this obstacle? How are we going to get it rolling once again? Seemingly to be an unsurmountable task. And they say, oh my Lord, what are we going to do? How do we get it moving again? Because over the past few months, during the winter season, some of the homeless have found it to be their home. 
and they have slept inside, unbeknownst to us, making it their home. Uh, oh, we were not all in objection to it, outside of the understanding that we have some legal understanding around uh, that property. Uh, but knowing that we, in the spirit of hospitality, said, Yvette's been used all along. It's just now getting the mountain moving. And we appreciate those people in great generosity who have uh, been captured, capturing that vision now and saying, I love people. I love the homeless. I love the communities in need. And I want to do a loving thing. And I want to participate. And that love is beginning to move the mountains as we move forward. Love heals the body. For we understand our consciousness. Carla did a beautiful job in the workshop yesterday. 2020 vision. Really embracing this understanding that uh, whatever we're thinking about creates a biology within our body. And it creates this wonderful impact or some of the dis ease that's created by the stress and the challenges that we embrace but when love permeates when we allow the vibration of love the energy of love the divine presence of love to work within our body it changes the whole molecular system science proves it scripture speaks of it the truth knows it and we just need to awaken to it so we understand that love is the truth. Love is the way. Love is life. Love is the main tenant of so many religious pathways. And love is the most powerful force always available. So may this force be with you at all times. We're learning to live in vibration is why we're here. Learning to live in the vibration of love is why you've come to this moment. Why you're here in this love. For love is experiencing God to the fullest, and that's what you came to do. You came as this spiritual being, this soul that was, now experiencing in a physical element, living out in a physical realm, a spiritual experience. And that spiritual experience is to experience the love of God. Love in you, around you, flowing through you, as we say over and over again, to experience it to the fullest. For love is becoming God for the world. God wants to reach out and touch within the physical realm. And the only way it happens is through the hands of the instruments of God. You and you and you. The voice of God. You and you and you. The presence of God. You and you and you. It is our individual and collective purpose. It's what we're here to do together. Is to love and to embody that spirit, to vibrate, to radiate, to let it flow through our lives. It's the secret of our life that is hiding in plain view. It is the secret to all that we need and desire within us. It's simply summed up in one word, love. Now the ancients used to always have challenges with great theologians and say, how could we break down our theological statements and make them so succinct and so simple? Someone would say, oh, this is the theological teaching and it may be three or four sentences or creating a paragraph. Say, oh, I can do one better. I'll make it more succinct and it's down in one sentence. And someone else saying, I'll make it down into three words. Oh, how wonderful. And now making it all down into one word, love. Love is the essence of what we're here to do, what we believe and how we operate, how we move and how we exist within this world. The everyday lessons that call for love are brought to you that might help you hone the craft of loving. That's right. You all are craftsmen here, and you all are working on this wonderful experience of being an expert at loving. So what happens is we draw onto ourselves all kinds of experiences that come our way. We attract them to help us hone the craft of loving, to be those wonderful instruments so what we find is that sometimes there are these crazy interruptions or challenges, those inconveniences. Maybe it's even a homeless person on the street that's calling you to hone the craft of love as you think about, oh, am I going to give or donate to that man who's asking on the street corner? He's just only going to take that money and maybe use it for alcohol or drugs or some other purpose does he really need food and before you know we begin to question and doubt whether we should even be generous at all and we pull away without any experience of interaction with that person in need you see it's a challenge it hones the craft of loving within us as we realize our calling is to love what people do with that love it's totally up to them and they're responsible for it but our call is to love to demonstrate love 
And people will say, well, I have loved and loved and I've given love, but I haven't had love in return because people haven't returned it to me. And let me just say, that doesn't, is not a call for us to stop doing anything because we are each called and responsible for our own lives. We're called to love and demonstrate that. What someone does with the love you share is up to them. And that's their issue, not yours. So we understand that this is opportunities that are coming to us to hone the craft of being one who demonstrates love. And when we do this, this love vibration lifts us to a higher consciousness. We talk about this all the time. Higher consciousness, a higher awareness, a higher awakening, a greater understanding. This kind of experience is lifting us higher and higher and frees us of the thoughts and actions that have minimized us and victimized us in our journey of our lives. What happens is when we start welcoming love, the vibration of love, feeling the energy of love, allowing the love that's there right around us to be experienced in our own individual lives, what happens is fear begins to slip away. Guilt begins to be removed. Judgments are beginning to let go. That's right, judgments are uh, uh, beginning to let go. We hang on to them quite often. Wait a minute, I still want to judge. Can I still judge and still love? Uh, no, because in the vibration of love, we release these things. They begin to fall away because the vibrational frequency and the power of love within your life is so intense. What happens is it just ushers away, removes away, pushes away all these things that are of negative energy within us. And the ego's stubborn need to be right. That's right. It releases. It lets go. You see, when we really love, if you look to the chapter of love within 1 Corinthians 13, it says, love does not boast. Love is not proud. Love is not uh, arrogant or rude. Love does not seek its own way. You see, the power of love then releases all of these things to allow freedom and liberation to happen and we move to a higher state as if all the sandbags in our helium balloon ride that we're ready to take off on are cut off and released and suddenly we begin to rise and go up to a higher state of understanding as we release one sandbag after another and uh, that helium balloon illustrating our rising begins to take off within our journey and we move to this higher consciousness with love that takes us to a place that we realize, wait a minute, this world isn't just about me. There's other people in this world. You see, love has that wonderful impact upon us, doesn't it? It awakens us that there's someone else in the world and it's not just about me. It's not just about me and my issues. It's not just about what I want and what's best for me. It's about the spirit of awakening to a sense of oneness that every aspect of this divine world that we live in is a part of us. And we move to a higher consciousness that understands that we're not here alone, but that we're here with one another. And we embrace this wonderful concept that we create a world that works for everyone, not just a few. That's love. When we think about that, we put this, love puts this energy that says, how do I create a world that works for everyone? True love says, how do I work with those who are disenfranchised and the marginalized? And how do I work with those who are experiencing great success? How do we find a world that works for everyone, no matter what their financial dynamic may be or what their cultural dynamic may be? But we find a way that works together because love builds these bridges that enables us to create a world that truly works, not just for me, but for everyone. That's the power of moving to this higher consciousness. Now, here's the good news. At any moment, you have the power to choose love versus fear or any other kind of emotion. And the simplest way to choose love is this. Here's the easiest way, the simplest way to make it happen within your life. It's this. Listen for love's voice. Listen for love's voice. And you'll hear it in your heart. You know, we often say uh, as pastors to our congregations, would you listen to my heart? My words may fail you, and the words may fail me. But if you listen to my heart, you'll go deep in and you'll understand the intention of the things that I'm expressing, the, what I'm trying to convey to you. If you understand, it, could you hear my heart and let me hear your heart? And let us listen to one another. And then we move beyond the words and somatics of words and the word pictures that sometimes paint different 
ideas for us that cause us to build barriers and walls and division. But we understand what's the true intent. What's the real heart here behind what's being said, done, or experienced? So we listen. We listen to the voice of love within the heart. We go to the center of our feeling, of our emotion, and we awaken to love there. We let love speak to us, and we ask this question, what would love do? What would love do? Have you ever been in those moments in life when you don't know what to do, but really what you do is simply turn and say, wait a minute, I know. What would love do? That's what I'll do, what love does. I will live and act in that way because whatever love does, that's what I'm doing because that's the calling of my life. Love is a light that shows a way and when we allow it to speak, we will then move in the right and perfect way. When you listen to the voice of love, you don't have to worry. You know you're always moving in the perfect direction. In your stillness, you'll hear this wonderful voice You'll know and experience this vibration of love, but the real question is, will you listen to it? Will you pause? There's a great need in our world today for the understanding of the importance of silence. We created a world around us of technology. Modern advancements have got all kinds of things going on. In fact, you can watch the television screen and there's a words going across the bottom. There's pictures on the side. There's the speaker going here. There's something else going there. There's, we are just sort of ADD people. Even if we're not ADD, hello, welcome. You're going to be ADD before the world's finished with you. And at the same time, you got people talking on their cell phone while they're carrying on a conversation with you. I was at the General Dollar yesterday buying Valentine's cards for everybody. And there, the sales clerk was trying to talk to me and talk to the person on the phone. And the person, he just put the person on the phone just on speakerphone. And she's wah, 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 wah. And she was ringing me up and all this kind of stuff, doing everything. And I said, uh, yeah, and what'd you say? Uh, wah, 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 wah. You know, I was like, she was multitasking, doing six different things at a time. And I said, you know what? Hey, why don't we focus on one? You know, if you would like to take that call, go ahead, because obviously you can't hear what this person is saying to you while you're trying to ring up my uh, purchases. So I'll just wait. Uh, I'll, I'll let you uh, have that experience because we need to kind of sort through and kind of filter out all these distractions that are coming at us. We got so many different ways that we're bombarded. We've forgotten the fine art of silence. We've forgot the fine art of being still and being quiet. We forgot it so much that sometimes we're uncomfortable if we're quiet. Makes us feel a little nervous. It's too quiet. Some of us can't sleep unless we got some noise. A little white noise going, a little fan going. We get in a world where we're not accustomed to the silence. And let me tell you this, it is in the silence, in the quiet, that you begin to hear the very voice of love speaking to you that helps you make good choices within the journey of your life. When you listen to this voice, then what happens is this voice of love will heal your pain. It's going to heal your pain. The pain of those hurts of past experiences that you've gone through, maybe your childhood, something happened in the last 10 years, some experience that was painful that caused a lot of hurt and wounds within you. But when you stop and listen to love, what happens is you go back and you begin to hear the experience bringing a new perspective because you're bringing love to it and you'll hear it differently. I know there's many times when I thought, boy, my parents failed me. Oh, I can't believe it. I could just, you know, go back and think about all the times when they just, I wanted this and they didn't approve and they didn't go forward and they didn't agree with all these kind of things. And then I think back, my parents are gone. They've transitioned and I revisit the story and I hear it differently now that I'm a parent and I'm much older, a little wiser, having experienced it. I revisit the experience this time with the voice of love and realize they loved me and they did the very best that they know how, knew how to do. I knew, understand with their limited education and their limited world scope, I understand that what they did and how they acted and how they spoke were for a, pers pers a perspective of love and it heals. You see, when we listen to the voice of love, that voice will help us heal all pain. For the love has the power for us to rewrite every conversation and every experience. To go back with love and to listen and to move forward in love with every conversation in the way that we would like it to be. 
How about when you begin to deal with those people on the telephone and you have experienced some poor customer service? Your call is very important to us. Please remain on the line. You know that experience. Your call is very important to us. Please remain on the line. And after 20 minutes, your call is still important to us. Please remain on the line. And you're just saying, how important is it really? And by the time the operator picks up and says, hi, can I help you? Are we ready to give them a peace of mind? Oh, because that energy of like, you are just making me wait, wait, wait. And it's all about me and my ego and my issues begins to rise up within us. How about we begin to write the conversation with love, with the voice of love that already speaks from the context that I know this person is going to help me in a way that's going to accomplish exactly what I need. And so I'm going to speak from love. And when I speak from the voice, with the voice of love, I know that the experience will transform and change to be positive. I could speak with the voice of, I'll tell you what I, what's on my mind, and I'll give you a little piece of it. And I could also create this kind of animosity and anger and, and division and separation. But it said the voice of love is healing and brings about all kinds of great things because it enables us to feel good. And when you feel good, you draw wonderful things towards you. The law of attraction is at work in a wonderful way with love because you, what you put out, you attract. So as you work with this wonderful spirit of love within you, beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. What happens is then that wonderful love begins to attract to you even more good in the world that you want to live in. And when we live in that love vibration, our energy resonates at this high frequency and we start to do something. We start to express God-like qualities. Suddenly now, we're more loving and more compassionate, more, more forgiving and tolerant. We offer greater respect and generosity. The energies of joy and peace rise within our lives because these godlike qualities, which are naturally and innate within us, rise to the surface. We're free from the baggage of negativity and limited thinking that holds us back. And so we have that ability to attract something more powerful. Listening to love has enabled us then for our pathway to be cleared. That's right. All that clutter and all that junk that's in your pathway of all your negative thinking, it begins to get removed. It clears out. It begins to make the pathway clear for you to move in the world for your highest and best. So living in the love vibration may sound really simple. But staying there, staying in the love vibration is a real challenge. Maybe one of the most difficult things that we do because we constantly have to put our ego into check. We have to put our attitude into check. We have to put all of our emotions into check. That it wants to rise up within this world and so living from the realm of love and listening to the voice of love sounds really good and easy, sounds so simple, but it takes work. It takes an effort on our part. And so what we find is that when we continually live in the love vibration, it takes this sort of commitment to practicing and experiencing it. So let me tell you this. When you're seeking good in everyone and anyone and everything, and what happens is you begin to attract and there's a connection to wholeness. It happens within you. And when you begin to bring trust to adversity, when you begin to be grateful for all you have, when you take the high road in any conflicted circumstances, when you're caring for living things, and when any thought of love that you have is held on, it will raise you and hold you in this beautiful place, being able to live in the voice of love and listen to it constantly within your lives. I want you to do something that's so powerful and is that to hold the vibration of love. And when you do, it will grow. Something amazing happens. As you hold on to the vibration of love, you grab it and say, I feel love today. Say it with me. I feel love today. You really feel it? Then say it again. I feel loved today. Now hold that vibration of love. I'm feeling loved. I have been loved by others. I hear loving phrases. I hear loving words. I know that love is all around me. I have love to give. I have love to share. You hold that vibration of love. And what happens? It multiplies. It expands. It will grow for you. So here's what I want to say. Is that love lifts us then from all limitations into our possibilities. 
We may be in a world of limitations and struggles. And love lifts us in such a powerful way that it lifts us out of the world of the physical and all of its no, 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 you can't and its limitations that say it's not possible, living us to the realm, lifting us to the realm of possibilities. How do we know that? Well, the Bible teaches it, illustrates it. You all know the story of Jesus walking on the water. The wonderful embodiment of the story is the symbol of the very Christ consciousness rising above the chaotic waters. And Peter gets, here's the invitation to step out of the boat and to walk on water coming to Jesus who is walking near the boat. And as he gets out of the boat, he walks with his affirmation and then looks around at limitation. Wait a minute, I'm a human being. I can't walk on water. And begins to sink as he begins to doubt and question every experience in the world around him. And he begins to sink. But what happens is, love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. How many of you know that old chorus, that old song? You remember? Oh, we've got some old all hymnal members here uh, who have remembered these choruses and songs from uh, old times and uh, other uh, spiritual pathways. Love lifted Peter. The Christ consciousness, the awareness is the embodiment of love. And what reached out to Peter to bring him out from his world of limitations was love. And love lifted him to rise him above one who was sinking in a world that says, I'm not going to make it. But love lifted him. How important it is that we understand that the love is the most powerful force of the universe. So today as we celebrate Valentine's, a week of loving, I encourage you to walk each and every day knowing that the force is with you. The love of God is with you. And that force is radiating from you, vibrating, flowing out as you awaken to it, as you allow it. As you listen to it and allow it to guide your life, the force will be with you and enable you to live your highest and best. So with that, we want to understand the power of this great experience called love and embrace this passage of Scripture that invites us to this wonderful truth, Beloved. Let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born, that's right, born anew, awakened, starting fresh. Everyone is born of God. And then in that birth experience, that awakening, that moment of saying, I come to this higher conscious, I know God, for God is love. And what I'm experiencing when I love, I'm experiencing God. And I really no, that God is here. He that loveth not, hmm, it's not of God. And the scripture then closes, because God is love. May the force be with you. Amen.